In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. Uh, so here is um, the beginning. Is uh, The Lord wants us to uh, open up the heart of God. I was listening to um, some teaching, uh, and I was saying that we really go for our things, for what we please us and what we uh, want and what we need from God, but um, not really going for what he needs and what he loves. So today, let us go for really what matters to the Lord. So we're opening the word of God and opening his, uh, his heart. Um, there is Bible verse very important for us, Deuteronomy 29, 29. So don't forget that reference, 29, 29. And it says, the secret things belong to the Lord, to the Lord, our God. But uh, um, the revealed things is for us and for our children. I think I got it later. But, but here is, there is things that God wants you to know, and there is things that should belong to God only. And it's not for you and I or anyone to go into it. But because people go, go into it, we suffer, all of us, from the consequence. But what is the heart of God that we're talking about today? The heart of God is doing something very uh, un, um, uncommon. We were not familiar with this. God is about to do a recreation. He's going to recreate a new heaven and a new earth. In Isaiah 65 and 66, he mentioned that twice. For behold, I create a new heaven and new earth. The formal shall not be remembered or come to, into our mind. That's how far God is thinking. And for the new heaven and the new earth, which I will make, shall remain before me, says the Lord. So shall your seeds and your name remain. So the, our children, grandchildren, and everyone of our heritage will stay. Seed here, it means our children. And our names be, will stay before the Lord. And that earth and this life that you are in now, and even the heaven, will not even be remembered. That's how much we really do not know what God is planning, unless you really read the word of God. Uh, confirm the verse in, in, uh, in Revelation 21, and he say, and I saw new heaven. So the, the apostle John saw it already. He went in the future and saw it because it's not yet happened. He saw a new heaven and new earth for the first heaven and first earth were passed away. So he's really ahead of time. And there was no more sea. We will not see the sea again. That's the word of God. So here is like a picture, a nice picture of the Jerusalem, which is all in gold. And in the middle going look like all the, the, the city, the river of God and, and the tree of life on both sides. And in here is the gate, and this is like a pearl. The door will be like a pearl. I just want to give you these good things before we go for the hard things, because the message, if you are scared <coughs> of a person, you better leave, because this is not for you. This is only a message for the brave, you know, who uh, really wanted to know what is going to happen. All we preach is about us, me, me, me. But now today we want to see what is in God's heart, because that's really what it matters. And, and here he said in Revelation 2, that he that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit say. Uh, to him that overcome, well, that tree of life, not every one of us will have an access to it. Very strange. We thought that it's already forbidden from Adam and Eve time when they left, and it's still there. But I'm, I'm going to surprise you a little bit today with these three Bible verses, and this is not even in my topic. But I said I share something light before we go de deeper in things a little bit harder. So what happened here? That who overcome, he will eat of the tree of life. So not every um, children, child of God who go to be into the presence of God or in the life to come will eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Who has ear to hear? And him who overcomes, so it's two condition here, that you are capable of listening and hearing God's voice, and you are an overcomer. But what is the second thing? That's in the beginning of book of, of Revelation. And in the end of it, it say, blessed are they that do his commandment. So there is a due commandment, that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates of the city. Not everyone will have even this picture uh, above, you know, showing us that the river 
will be like all the city um because the river passed through the i don't know it's very if you try to draw it may susie try to draw it because it needs an imagination the river in the middle and the tree is on both sides so people draw a different way and and really that's imagination of their heart the river two sides but here is the thing she is uh, um blessed who do so we have to do the word of the commandment of god that they may have right to the tree of life so some people will have rights some people will not have rights very very strange teaching when i put the bible verse together from the cross reference uh, and here is something that you may have an access to the tree of life now say oh really it means i eat from it and i will not die maybe there is uh, two people who never died, you know, on the, our, uh, the Bible is in our hand. So if you get this one, which I say now, you may have access to that. Uh, Proverbs 3 is saying 18, she is a tree of life. Who is she? Is talking, and you read the beginning of the chapter, is talking about the wisdom, wisdom of God. So she is a tree of life. To them that they lay hold upon her, and happy is everyone that retains her. So you found the wisdom and hold on it. It's a tree of life. Amazing, the word of God, when you go deeper into it. That's a good part of my message. But what is the sad part of my message is that this group of people will not enter. They will not see the city. And they will be thrown outside into the darkness. Today, you're going to analyze this type of people. So I pray that you're solid enough to hear uh, the word. Uh, and check yourself if you're really going to be inside this door or outside in the darkness without really uh, compromising. Just check your, yourself with the light of God. And here is Revelation 22 uh, is saying, but, uh, for without, which is outside, are the dogs. And dogs here is and sorcerer, uh, whoremongers, murderers, and idolaters. And whoever love and make uh, and make it uh, loves and makes a lie the people who, who practice falsehood this is uh, two different reference one king james and one another one so the people who love and practice falsehood who love the lie they will not enter but the dogs here it's uh, it's always um, a word used by the, Jew the jewish and then used by the arabs as well they take it from them it's a heathen the heathen, which are the people who are uncircumcised, not the children of God. Not talking here, of course, about the dogs, your cat or your dog. No, these are the heathen. There is no promises for the heathen. Heathen people, uncircumcised, the people who don't have promise, uh, covenant with God, they will be outside the gate, outside the door in the darkness. And everyone who practice sorcery, whoremongers, murderer, and idolaters. I'm going to divide them into two groups, sorcery and idolaters. Who practice sorcery. There is sorcery. That's the main topic. We're going to speak about it a little bit later. And I, idolatry, which is idol worshiper. These two categories are uh, very important. Whoremongers, in another way, is sexually or more. People with too much sexual uh, things into their life. And the murderer. So here is like two and two. Why I'm dividing them to that way, uh, we'll see now. Uh, he's saying as well into Revelation 21. So this is Revelation 22, the last chapter of the book of the word of God. Chapter 21, he gave something similar. He said, but the fearful, unbelieving, abominable, murderer, whore, whore and you see the color code, I'm using it again. Murderer, whore, whoremongers, or mongers, Sorcerer, idolaters, liars shall have their parts into the lake which burn with the fire and the brimstone, which is the second death. So if you are with me for a while, you should by now know what is the second death. The second death is the lake of fire. Children of God do not will not have the lake of fire. Lake of fire is a place for Satan, the, the fallen angel, and whoever follow them of human being uh, from their seeds or from human seeds, this is their place. But as you can see here, he's again repeating the same word in 21, 22 of book of Revelation. If you go to other category of uh, putting the sinful uh, acts or the people who are in sin, 
uh, in let's say Corinthian and Galatian. And of course there is more, but I'm just focusing on these two category. That's uh, the main uh, focus for me today. He's going here in Corinthian as, as you can see, and in Galatian five, you can see the similar uh, code fornicator, idolaters, idol, idolaters means uh, idol worshipers, different from adulterers, or people do sex effeminate, which are the uh, homosexual fornicator, like you see the same category of uh, things. Uh, here is say uh, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lavishness, these are all sexual sins, idolatry and witchcraft, these are the two topics we're speaking about, murderer they will not inherit the kingdom of god they shall not inherit the kingdom of god this is no jokes about it why we talk, focusing on this we're going to speak about the abomination of desolation because i thought that i know what it is and i think you think that you know what it is but when you study the word of god a bit carefully i found i didn't know what it is and i was asking god and he revealed to me something very unknown to me so here is, uh, the Lord said, I'm the Lord your God brought, who brought you out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage, that you shall uh, have no other gods before me. God is serious about having no other God. So having other God, it's, uh, this is a serious matter with God. He's a jealous God. And it's not like he wants to dominate you. Oh, you love me, me alone. No. There is serious reason for it. Because God don't need your love. You need his love. It's not, oh, please love me and love me alone. Otherwise, I'm going to perish. No, it's not like that. You are in need of his love, not, not the opposite way. So we, need, we will come now and study more deeper why those two sins are into the sight of God of a different value. Um, why does God say no other God? You have no other God before him. Exodus. This is the first commandment. You shall have no other God before me. This is number one command into the Ten Commandments. And it's one out of two was the commandment of Jesus. Love the Lord your God from all your heart, from all your soul, from all your strength, and love your neighbor. He made them in two. But here is serious. God's serious about this. And you're going to see why we're going to suffer to the abomination of desolation, because this is one of the main reasons. Um, here he's saying, I am, and there is no one beside me. And Sephaniah, God is speaking that again, and you found many verses. Uh, how she has become a desolation. He's talking about Jerusalem. A resting place for beasts. Everyone who passed by her will hiss and wave his head in contempt. How that place was just a joy is a place of desolation. Desolation means destruction. If the word desolation is hard for you, abomination of desolation. So there is an abomination. It means a serious sin done in the sight of God, which bring desolation, total destruction for heaven and earth. Like we begin here that God is planning to do a new heaven and new earth. And the one that we are in now, they will not even be remembered. Imagine. Like a person on my age, we lived, you know, I was telling the same, you know, good that we lived most of our life. God helped the new one, the, the young ones. And, and the word is coming uh, worse and worse, you know. So we're seeing this and we say, um, now here the Lord uh, in Jeremiah 2 said something very, very serious. I had to alter this picture because it was ugly. But what I like about it is like the Lord calling himself the fountain of living water. That's God, Yahweh. So for us, we know because our ministry, rivers of living water, we know that's the name of the Holy Ghost and name of Jesus. But now he is calling himself that he is the rivers of living water, talking about God the Father, Yahweh, who led uh, the original name of God. So he say, for my people have committed two evils, not one. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living water. They have forsaken me. But they hewed or dig to themselves cisterns, 
broken cistern that cannot hold water. Two things, two serious things. They not only left God, but they dig for them, themselves something which is not going to give them life. So he's calling himself, they've forsaken me, the fountain of living water. So we have to realize as a ministry that name of rivers of living water can be said about the Father in this Jeremiah 2. Now we have the, the sins. Our sins are package and, and a big things, you know, like there are plenty different ones. Uh, the one which I left in the beginning, which are sins. Um, so here is the psalm is saying, against you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. So you are right into your verdict and your judgment and you justify. There is a reason why you judge that way. So here is the psalmist say, I sin towards you. Look like all sins are the same into the sight of God. But really, really, truly, it is not. There is different level of sin. Yeah, with mortal sin and, I'm, you know, Catholic divided that way. Is there a sin that is worse than all others? We probably tend to say one sin can be bad enough to take us out of the, 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 the dwelling of God, like what happened with Eve. But today I'm going to focus to show you a little bit, no, there is a deadly sin. There is sins which are more severe, you know, like we go for uh, uh, gluttony, greed, sloth, wrath, all those sins of, again, for yourself, you sin against yourself. There is sins against God, sins against man, your fellow man, and sins against yourself. So when you are gluttony or greed or sloth, like lazy or envy and all that, this is sin against yourself, pride. This is here like sexual love when this lady was uh, trying to uh, rape or whatever, Joseph. This is Potiphar's wife picture. Like this is sin against others. There is sins against ourselves, but there is sin against God. So when we sin against God, that's probably more serious than the other ones. But I'm just going to tell you, as much as we think that the sin against God is more serious, um, it can be forgiven without consequence. Well, the sins against other cannot be erased. It will have to have consequence. What I'm trying to say, let's say someone rape someone, man rape a woman, or uh, some man kill another man. Yeah, sorry to God, it's not going to take that uh, the, the consequence of that away. There will be a child will be born <clears throat> from sin, without father, without Whatever consequence, he killed someone, there'll be family will be robbed from their child or from their son or from their father. So sorry, cannot really, sorry, Lord, I do this. That's not the way. When you sin against God, even it's bigger sin. It's more evil. When you sin, when um, the, the child of uh, Ali Kehen, the, the, the priest uh, Eli, on the time of uh, Samuel, he said you, he, they don't even sin, but they make the people of God sin against the Lord. So it's a bigger crime. It's a bigger crime that you sin against God than just sin against your fellow man. But on the same time, consequence, God can forgive you, but the judge will not forgive you. If you kill someone, you're going to go to to spend time behind bars because you're breaking the law and someone was uh, altered by the, the attacks or the your sins. So here it look like easier, but um, consequences are different. Now we are focusing on the two main sins that is idolatry. There is no other God and the witchcraft and the cousins of witchcraft to are many. Two main topic, important. And uh, the other two that we spoke about, where was they? This one, uh, I lost them, no, here, or maybe here. We said dog sorcerers and murderer, of course, when you kill someone, like I said, this is a sin against man or woman, of course. Poor mong mongers is sin against human as well. All sexual sin against yourself, towards your body, and towards others. But the sorcery and idolatry are sins towards God. So on the sin uh, level, scale, whatever, they should be more weight. 
uh, then the other sins that we uh, lie or all those things. You sin against God and God take them serious in a way that uh, gonna produce something called the abomination of desolation. So this is here, how we get that. In another Bible verse in Samuel, if you remember about Saul, when he say, for the rebellion is a sin of witchcraft. Of course, we focus more on the word rebellion, but our topic here, talking about witchcraft and stubbornness is an, an, as iniquity and idolatry. We're talking about those two major sins which are against God personally, and they are not the same level of other sins. So witchcraft, this uh, magic arts and all that family, and idolatry, worshiping idols, gonna bring the human being to the abomination of desolation. But for us, we think abomination of desolation, which was prophesied by the prophet Daniel and Jesus, uh, it's something yet to come. I, that's all I knew about it. And it's very serious because he's, Jesus is saying here, one of the hardest prophecy that you can imagine it's in Matthew 24, Luke 21, and uh, in, in, in all the, the Gospels, and Mark 13. What is the Jesus saying? And when you shall see Jerusalem compassed, mean surrounded with armies, then know that the desolation uh, uh, thereof is night, is near. The, the desolation, the abomination of desolation is near. So what is he saying? Then the one who are in Judea, they don't go to the mountain, and the one who are in the midst, whatever, they don't go there. Something like that. Don't go. He's giving you some instruction. If you are on that time, read that part. Uh, I, for me, I'm not going to be. So for these, be the day of vengeance. Can you imagine that that God that we are taking him very lightly, he's speaking that this day be the days of vengeance. You know, when you watch a movie and it's about vengeance, vengeance, how horrible it is. But could you imagine that God is taking revenge of what happened from human being when they were left doing whatever? So it's very horrible. And, and all things which are written may be fulfilled. So everything written into the word of God, that God really is taking revenge from people and mainly from the Jews on those seven years. Last Saturday, Pastor Alfie and I, we, uh, we were there in the ministry and then an, a, a Jewish lady approached us and she started to swear and be very uh, angry. And I didn't know even what is making her angry. I'm Jewish, I'm Jew okay. Jewish are polite. Why are you doing this? Oh, no, no, I'm Ashkenaz, you whatever. And she keep talking rubbishness more and more. And I said to her, oh, I am baptized. I said, listen, you are not baptized because that's not the spirit of Jesus. Why are you angry? Oh, you don't know how, how much degree I, or you have, whatever degree, I don't care. What is make you angry? You are, oh, I am the Ashkaniza. I said the Ashkaniza are not even Jews. To my apology, and I try to, I show you in the word of God, if you want to know who are the real ones, those one that you, point is, ah, oh, you didn't know that we have that Holocaust. I said, really? You really is taking care about that last Holocaust. Wait and see the Holocaust coming. The more serious Holocaust is coming on the seven years and done particularly for the Jews. Then we're gonna talk. See the words here. These days are days of vengeance. Mm. No joke about it. And all the things that which written may be fulfilled. And he say, and wow unto them. If they are in child or sucking, whatever, they shall be great distress in the land and rust upon all these people. I said, wait and see the seven years of tribulation. It is written in the book. If you have a problem with the Holocaust who passed, wait and see the Holocaust when it's coming and when it's showing the rust of God. She was mad when he heard me saying that. Because, you know, the Jewish, oh, they, they, they take that things to cry. So I'm just talking today and right now through this part to the people who are Jews, because God loves you. And I said to her, you poor thing, you missed your Messiah. Your Messiah came and you missed him. You missed your Messiah. So what else do you want? Holocaust, who gonna save you from the Holocaust to come? You already so saved from the past Holocaust. And my message, because I said to her, I love the Jews. Oh, everyone hates Jews. I said, no. 
We have uh, maybe the Ashkaniza <coughs> Jews who are doing the travel around the world, but you do not know who are the real Jews going to surprise you. Go do your region and you find that you're none of the Jew bloodline. She was very aggravated. I, I don't know. I shouldn't be sharing that. But the point is, my heart is for the Jews because I love them. I love them dearly. And I, because God loved them, that's the only reason. I don't have friends, uh, Jews or whatever, but because God loves them, they, uh, they are precious to me. And, and they have a, a, this opportunity that they miss their Messiah and they blaspheme on him that he is coming from an adultery and all, all those things so they can find for themselves reason to reject him. But on the day as Zechariah the prophet say, oh, no, uh, they will uh, a heart of supplication and sorrow and cry from the heart when they recognize that they crucified him and they step into their, his loin was by them and they will cry their hearts. There will be a big revelation and Israel will be saved in the nation. After seven years of terrorism, they will be days of vengeance. I never heard someone preaching about this sentence, but for me, when I was reading it today, days of vengeance of God. Wow unto them. Great distress in the land, wrath of God upon the people. Serious thing. So if you really um, are a Jew or think you are better, you better humble yourself and read the rest of the book of God. Jews has the beginning of the book. The Christian has the other half of the book. So be humble enough that you read the rest of the book and see that revelation. Because those seven years are really done for the salvation of the Jews. And if there is a Christian there, he don't have any, any uh, second chance. Don't have time to argue about that. It's up to you to believe what you want to believe. But here is saying in Mark, for those days shall be affliction, 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 such as was not from the beginning of the creation that God created, neither shall be there be never affliction and terror and, and distress people will see like those days. Unless the Lord shortened those days, no flesh should be saved. But for the elect sick, whom he has chosen, he has shortened the, the days. So this sentence is not for the Christian. The shorten, the elect here is talking about the Jews who are really never received their Messiah. And God will shorten that affliction because he wants them to be saved and enter into the, the kingdom, the millennium they are waiting for for 5,000 years. So I was reading that verse and it was a bit sometime in the early uh, study confusing me, thinking a verse like that can make people think that they have to go to the tribulation. And mm -hmm. if you think like that, you are not really into your ma sound mind. Uh, but this Bible verse is for uh, the Jews. God going to shorten the, the terrible time because he has a chosen one out of them. I, I preach a lot about the tribulation, about uh, the rapture, so I don't want to repeat. Many preaching you can find out. So it's another holocaust and even worse. And I was thinking, you know, about, oh, I didn't get the Bible verse, sorry. Um, that holocaust will be atomic power who come and um, human being will, will break the earth. But sorry, it's not going to happen like that. God Almighty will bring fire from heaven. The fire will come from heaven, from the Lord. Exactly as the day, day of uh, Elijah. That's a judgment of God. So the end of those is not going to be a uh, fire of the atomic, as people will like to believe. Now here, um, come to my uh, attention. Uh, start to read into the, the books which are removed uh, or not added to, the, to the, the Bible that we have in our hand. I start reading by Tobia and I get a revelation. But then I said, oh, well, let me read the other ones. There is four books of Maccabi. Uh, and this is the first one, so first chapter. Problem of those books are um, many, many chapters. Too long, every chapter, 50, 60 verse, too long. Um, and probably this is one of the reasons why they are not added and many other unimportant un reasons. Point is, they are speaking to us about a history part of the after that we have no idea about it because it's not written in the church. So if we as ignorant uh, or as we want to follow whatever is there, 
Uh, we don't want to uh, read those books and put them as ca canonized book. Up to you, but at least use them as um, a reference for the history. Because what they said into the history of after what happened is really of great importance after the destruction of the temple that we do not know. So Maccabees start by finding a, a king from Assyria who came and he consented to his religion and he want people to follow him. He for, forbid the burn offering and the sacrifice in the temple. And he said that the one who do the Sabbath is profane. Their feasts, their festival are profane. And he pollute the sanctuary. You can read it. It's in front of you. Uh, find, uh, Google it and you find it. He bring a swine, a pig, and he put it on unclean and beast. He put them into the altar of God. And, and he was uh, forcing people not to, to circumcise their children. And even children circumcised, they were hanging them. Horrible things happened to the people who wanted to follow uh, God uh, and, and the temple. And in the end, they might be, they may forget the law and change all their ordinances. He really want to eradicate uh, Judaism. And whosoever would do according to the commandment of king, he said he should die. So you can read more. So when I start to read this, I was just like a little bit, um, because this is the picture we have about the abomination of desolation that uh, the um, that's written by Daniel and confirmed by Jesus in those three uh, gospels. Uh, in Daniel, what he's saying that Daniel nine is speaking about all what's happened, the treaty, and and all of us are a little bit familiar. The one who study the Bible prophecy, but he say here that he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week, one week, which is the seven years. And in the midst of the, the, the week, we, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation, which is the, the offerings, oblation, to cease. He will stop the sacrifice and the, the offering and, the over, and for the over, overspreading of abomination. There will be uh, horrible things happening that he shall, uh, God will make it desolate. So uh, he, on that guy, I'm going to get you the name of that king now. He uh, burned a pig. This is very, very horrible to the Jews and to the word of God mm. uh, and unclean uh, things. So we think that can be the abomination of desolation. And I was thinking, is it, this is really God will be that, sorry, I, I'm not blaspheming, but God is not in a shallow mind to be upset about such thing, and it's already happened. And even until the confusion and determined shall be poured upon the desolate. So this is the abomination of desolation, according to the prophet Daniel, that Jesus spoke about it. But um, I was thinking about how, when was the Maccabees? Is it before Jesus or after? But then I came across, you know, that uh, uh, line, Daniel, three abominations. So here is the thing. This ab uh, abomination of desolation happened many, many, many times across the history. Not once, not twice, not thrice, not four. Many times. It means like sin, so condensed sin that God hated to that much that he produced a destruction and complete destruction to his place, to his temple, to his city. Uh, so what is this? Who can see this transcript recording on? What is this, Pastor Elf? All right, doesn't matter. So the, uh, the abomination of desolation happened, like I said, and we're gonna see now many, more than one time. Uh, the abomination of the, the king, his name uh, is Iochus Epiphanes. He's 1967 BC. BC, it means before Christ. So the prophecy that Jesus spoke into the three um, uh, gospels is he's not going to prof Jesus prophesy of something past, prophesying of something yet to come. So that the prophecy of Jesus who is not fulfilled, as the prophecy of Daniel could be re really uh, happen and going to happen again. People say, oh, everything passed and some other people, everything will come, but things happen and it will happen again. So here is the, the abomination. When the Babylonian came, they destroyed the temple 
they take all the children of God and, and took them to Babylon. And before then, the Assyrian, the Assyrian king came and took all the 10 tribes and imported them, well, deported them to his country. Really desolation. And the prophet Jeremiah and others we keep warning the people for the sin that they are doing and their idolatry and their idol worship and their um, sorcery and the things that they're doing. And they were not listening. And then start to talk to Judah. As happened to the 10 tribes will happen to you. None of them listened to the warning of the prophets. And the result of it, they were all, the temple was destroyed first time. The city of Jerusalem was destroyed. But then happened uh, that Antioch here into the, that line, if you can see, 167 before Christ. But then Jesus re uh, predicts Daniel's abomination into the discourse of the Olivet discourse, which is Matthew 24, 21 of Luke and 13 of uh, Mark. Um, John didn't speak about it. He spoke about more of the things in the whole book of, uh, with more details into the book of Revelation. Now there is another destruction because the, the temple on time of Jesus was there. There was another destruction about 70 year after the coming of Christ. So this is the abomination three by the prince to come, destruction of the temple. And they destroy it. And as Jesus said, you know, um, stone over stone will not last. His word come to pass. Um, here is, yeah, we, we said this uh, slide. There's something very important. The Lord, uh, uh, Yahweh, when he was speaking to um, Abraham, he said to him, you will have your, your children that will go to Egypt, but they're going to be in slavery for uh, 400 years. But in the fourth generation, they shall come higher or outer for the iniquity of the Amorite is not yet full. So the Lord kept the whole history of Abraham descendant to him. They will be enslaved in Egypt and they will stay there for 400 years because yes. the sin of the Amorite didn't come to fulfillment. So God is really, can you see that picture here? Uh, uh, it's like the cup, which didn't pull yet the measure. It didn't reach the level that really uh, uh, destruction has to come. Desolation, the word, so there is abomination, there is sin, which is really, um, discuss, you know, hated by God but didn't reach the level yet to produce the destruction that happened once and twice, and we'll see more. So that child sacrifice is very common for this. If you like maps like I do, uh, this is the land of Canaan, and I'm gonna show you another one. So this is the Amorite, the Amorite, Amorite, Amorite. So all this area of Syria and, Le and the Philistine and all that is their land, this part. These people keep sinning against God in a horrible, serious matter, which like we said before, they have other gods. They have uh, all the sorcery and the things they do, and they do the child sacrifice. They're killing their children to give them to the demons. So those serious sin, God is, uh, he, he could remove them and remove the land like he did the few destruction. But God didn't decide that he take those people out threw them out and bring the people of God, which are Jewish people to the promised land. So he evacuate all the people, the Amorites and all this land. So destruction come in few formats. And because we don't look at bird, uh, at bird view from what is happening to, from the beginning, we cannot get that full plan, plan of God. So sometimes God decided to ruin. Sometimes he will restore the lands and keep the people. Um, we have here multiple example of the abomination of desolation, multiple. And, and probably none of you will know much about the tabernacle of Shiloh. This is a real story happen and it show you how God really serious. God is serious about what he's gonna do. Please don't think about anything I said and remember. He is serious about what he's gonna do. What happened, it happened before, and it happened in sev severe format that you cannot imagine. And, and, and when God destroy a place, 
But later on in generation after is restored. No, when he destroy a place like the abomination, desolation, destruction of that sort of anger of God, the place stay always desolate, always unbuilt and un unreproductive. Land is cursed. You cannot believe that this is really thing uh, is true until I start to hear about it later uh, or years when I was studying the word of God. So what is it, the tabernacle of Shiloh? But before then we have to put like three really, um, or oh, let's go for that. The people were disconnected from God. So he disconnect himself from this temple. Or on that time there was a tabernacle. Moses was carrying a tabernacle. Joshua was carrying tabernacle and they were moving with that tabernacle until the time of uh, Samuel. If you read, he's speaking about Shiloh, go to Shiloh until the time when uh, um, uh, David decided to remove it and take it to the city of Jerusalem uh, or city of David. Before then, it was to that place, but God really rejects the tabernacle when he was dwelling among the people. He was there and they were around him, the whole tribes. We are not really, you feel Shiloh is not important. Shiloh is very important. Uh, uh, part of the Bible, we don't understand it. So what we happen here now, um, Shiloh was, you know, the Ephraim, Ephraim is like uh, when you say the 10 tribes, there is always competition between Judah and the 10 tribes or Ephraim. Ephraim is the youngest child of uh, Joseph. So he's not supposed, the, the people who have the temple, people who have the Torah, the people who have the, the uh, Levites and the, um, the priesthood are the, the tribe of Judah. But on that time, it was on the tribe of uh, Joseph or the 10 tribes, Ephraim. Very, very strange. So he took it from the 10 tribes and returned it back to Shiloh as much as we think it's a bad word, but it's a prophecy. Um, it's about the name of Jesus as well. Uh, when he was prophesying, uh, I think uh, their father Israel and giving, you know, uh, I will go for it. But here, this is Shiloh. It's in the tribe of Ephraim. And what happened? There was a house of God into that place. Uh, and, and God in Psalm 78, he was saying he abandoned the dwelling place at Shiloh. The tent which he had pitch among men. So God was putting a pitch tent, make a tent and dwell among men. He abandoned it. Very serious, extremely serious, very sad. Uh, then I will make in Jeremiah, then I will make this house like Shiloh. You make destruction and, and uh, not only destruction, abom desolation place which no one will recover that piece of land. Let's say fire happened in a place, you can restore it. But well, those places are irrestorable because they're cursed by God. So he in Jeremiah saying here uh, that the house like Shiloh, this city, I will make a curse to all the nation of the earth. They look at that place and think oh, that's a cursed place. Probably all of us know about Sodom and Gomorrah. On my very surprise, years ago, I discovered that Sodom and Gomorrah cannot be reproduced the land. The land is not cultivable at all. Israel, not nation number one in cultivation and crops, they cannot cultivate that part. The God put on it a curse, maybe uh, salts or whatever, or things uh, which like, usually, you know, the volcanoes or something like that make the, the, the land fertile. But for that, it's the curse of God. So you know about Sodom and Gomorrah, but you do not know about the ones that I'm going to mention because it's not really preached about it much. And here in Jeremiah, he say, this house will be like Shiloh and this city will be desolate without inhabitants. So this is telling you about, it's not only destruction and boom, but it will continue to be inhabited, uninhabited and desolate. That's the desolation, the abomination of desolation that is spoken about, which not happened once. It happened along the history of mankind many times. And if we're going to continue as human beings, ignore what God hurt him, 
Like I said to you, I was listening to this guy say about relationship. We take what we want from God, what is benefit. We pray for, oh, give me this God and whatever. It's all about us. None of us open the, head, the mind of God or the heart of God to know what is about to happen. And we are on a verge of a big things happening under our sight. And we do not even know. Just like very, very surprised. But that's not my topic. But um, what is it? Not, no, sorry. That's driving away. Um, that one here. Oh. Closed. They're talking about the aliens who are already there. They find aliens into whatever. Uh, just it's not my topic now. So let me. So they are introducing us to the world of the the, the angel falling coming uh, from outside. But let's focus on our topic. Uh, here Shiloh is uh, like I said to you into the Genesis. He was prophesying. Uh, the scepter shall not depart from Judah and the lawgiver from the Judah. It's not a prime. The scepter, which is the king, the scepter of the king, will not depart from Judah. It's the Judah is the, the tribe which bring kingshood. From the line of Judah will come the king. From the line of Levi will come Aaron and his descendant as a priest and, and Levi. It's not from anyone. You cannot decide for yourself. God pick and choose whatever he decides because he in, in, put into that seed or that person the things that he will need him to show up later. Um, so here is uh, the, in one of the sacred book of the Lord. So here, I just want you to be aware of the word Shiloh. This is very, very un, um, unfolded. You, you try to find the meaning of these people who uh, translate or talk about the Bible. They don't have a real interpretation of this passage of the scripture. It's a prophecy that he gave to his son. And speaking about Shiloh, when he will come, uh, unto him shall be gathering the people. That's Jesus when he will come. Now back to this one. Um, like I said, the, the, the tabernacle of Shiloh, the tent which he placed among men. God had a plan and his plan is to put his tent among his people because they were living in the desert all those years. So he was among them. And then they end up by being in Shiloh when they settled for many, many years. Um, but I'll go more and show you what Shiloh looked like. You may like this. This is someone, of course, who uh, drew the picture of this area when it was supposed to be Shiloh of the past, a, a good blessed place. But this is the Shiloh of now, location of the tabernacle for many years. It's a de desert, deserted place. It's like Sodom and Gomorrah. It's never been, it's a desert. God put the curse and no one can reverse it. We cannot cultivate, we can, they cannot make anything out of this path. It's God departed and God departed. Desolation will come because the sins and the accumulation of things happening. So here is a Bible verse for they provoked him for anger with their high places. They wanted to make their sacrifice everywhere. He put his name in Jerusalem. Thing is now God put his name in Jerusalem. He desired that temple. That temple now is destroyed once and twice. And he will, uh, there will be another temple built uh, soon, very soon. And that's the design, design that they were doing it now. Um, and they moved him to jealousy with the graven image, the other gods. And here is so that the forsook the tabernacle of Shiloh, the tent which are placed among the men. So God wants to dwell into a place and it's deserted like that. So he mean what he say, what he say, he mean it. He's not joking around. Uh, and, and here another picture of Sodom and Gomorrah. If you think uh, I'm talking uh, story, Sodom and Gomorrah updated version. Amazing news, discovery, example of judgment to come. It's an example of judgment to come. 
Shiloh, the temple, or the tabernacle was not a temple. Tabernacle means tent that they were removing as yet they go. This is deserted. This is deserted too. One more one, Nineveh. Probably all what you know about Nineveh is not really good enough. We thought that the people of Nineveh, they were escaping the wrath of God because all of them, they, um, they repent. But there is two prophecies on the Old Testament saying that it's not going to be repented. And when you read into the, those books, uh, I think the one who was Tobit, Tobia, uh, he was talking, he was living in Nineveh. And he said, there will come the prophecy. My son, leave here and go back to where we come from. They were taken. Nineveh, it's in uh, Assyria. Uh, or, uh, you know, I will show you the map to, sh to, see it, to show it to you exactly. Go back to, your, to our homeland. Because the prophecy of the prophet will come to pass. And destruction will come to Nineveh. But... Um, yeah, in the, in the end of the book of the story, the, the, the son left the country as the advice of the father. Uh, so this is in Inaba, another picture of a place which is deserted and uncultivated. Uh, so why did the desolation happen? None of the abomination would happen if the people had not mixed God's worship with the other worship of the other gods of the other nation. God see that as very serious. Is this like I'm married to you so you cannot have another wife or another? No. God is no and yes because God compared his relationship as a husband to a wife that he expects to be faithful for him. But we will know now when God say don't do something, it's not because he wanted to have some rules that we follow because if we don't follow harm will come upon us. And we will see what happened maybe in the second session, um, what happened when we follow the other gods and when we go to witchcraft. But today I just want to focus on that abomination of desolation coming from those major two sins, which can bring humanity to the catastrophe for another time very soon. And I want you to really understand God will mean what he say. He did it once and twice. If you don't believe me, look at this picture. Those are places where already destroyed and uncultivated, even with the technology of the Jews. Um, so it's an, um, a, a, an accumulation of lawlessness. Um, when he lose, we lose hold of what God actually is saying and we follow what we think, that's exactly the description of the Christian of this generation. They form whatever that, that soft God that they think about him. They're going to come and take revenge from the one who didn't listen. And I'm not really trying to scare you, but I want to scare you today, then leave you. And, and then your blood will be in my hand. We speak soft messages a lot. But please, brother and sister, take this message as serious. Because when I discover what is the abomination of the solution, it's not killing a a pig or putting whatever into the, the temple. Uh, well, we know that in, as according to the Daniel, then the middle of three and a half years, um, he will uh, sit and de declare himself the Antichrist as God. That's really serious. Problem is glory of God departed. God is moving. So what happened when God decides to move out of the temple? And this is here uh, the, the topic or the solution of what I'm talking about. There is many religion now around the world and you can see the picture. I turn it because I put all uh, the cross with um, the Judaism and Islam and uh, Bushism and Ism and Isma, all that. They call it... Uh, uh, a omnist, it's a person who believes in all faces or creeds. Everything is good for him. And a person who believes in a single transcendent purpose or cause. Guy who can go with all religion is fine. And, and I preached many times in the past about that temple and this picture, you will not really find it the way it is now. It's removed. So here is the wing of Judaism when the, the Jews have the wailing wall. 
This is the Islam when there is the mosque, and you can see here that's a temple rock which is in the middle. This is going to be wing for the Christian for New Age religion wing. New Age, Hinduism wing, Taoism wing, Confucianism wing, wing for Buddhists, eight wings. That's a Masonic Rothschild temple. For me, this is the abomination of desolation when they all come together. It's another story. When all humankind communicate together and focus on one thing, let us do our things and go to heaven. That's a Babel, Babel place when God will look at the unity. They are united with all this corruption, of course. Neither Yahweh nor Jesus will dwell in such a, a building. So that's more serious, you know, into the conference was a week or 10 days ago in Egypt was main things about global warming. And I preached to them, that's not the, the, the reason. It's probably were about discussing those things of the one world religion, which is people are all coming together. The plan is there and the check of this building is over there and they are just trying to do it. It's a Luciferian center. It's a place where really, uh, the, the Antichrist will sit. So all people come together in one mind. Hallelujah. And you, you find many people come around and say, I just respect all religion. I said, I don't. I don't respect. I respect you as a human being and I like you, but I don't like your religion. I tell the Muslim, I don't like Islam. It's all corrupted. I'll tell them, I like you. I want to help you and whatever. But if we talk, no. So respecting all religion is that rubbishness, multi-religious, omnis, whatever. These names which are preached around the world, uh, that God in the beginning separate nations. This is very important uh, Bible verse that probably will be unknown, unknown to many of us. We know the dispersion that God did into the, um, the tongues were dispersed and people even you, you can hear on the phone the voice of someone and you know exactly where he's coming from. There is something that God encodes and you say, I am in the Western world. Why is the same thing happening to me? As I, It's like a curse following, you know, the same race or whatever. God put that uh, of, over every nation, the tongue and certain character, whatever. You can see there is certain features for every nation and every uh, places uh, around the world. And here is the Deuteronomy, when the most high divided to the nation their inheritance, when he separated the son of men, he set bounds of the people according to the number of children of Israel. So he decided for every nation, the border. And another one, which I love in book of Acts 17, he say that we are all done from one blood. And he said, but he has determined the time before appointed and the bound of their habitation. Every nation is, sorry guys, it's a bit boring, the topic, but Alfie is sleeping. Oh. Um, but I, I'm, I'm gonna stop with this, you know, this is called syncretism, combination of separate concept into an, one new or unique idea. This is the blending of all the craziness, religion and whatever, and they're putting in, into one. So there is idolatry and syncretism. Why this is here when the desolation, uh, uh, abomination of desolation will happen, when those old people come, the same unity come to them in one building, they're trying to worship the false God. So here, um, so Nineveh didn't repent where uh, Zephaniah because of the time you look tired, read it for yourself, Zephaniah too. Uh, he said that there will be judgment against Nineveh and there was like wave of war, Zephaniah 2, 13, and, um, and, and this Zephaniah 2 and 3, talking about the destruction of Nineveh. None of us know destruction of Nineveh, but Nineveh was destructed the same way. Uh, after they repent, the, the, the penalty was postponed, but it was destructed exactly as what happened to Shiloh where the tabernacle of God and destroyed exactly the same way. So God is serious. When you go to all those civilization, which nothing was left. I know it's a, it's a heavy topic. So just bear with me one minute and I. Uh, so if you do not really rem remember all what happened, these things will come to happen another time. 
à. uh, while this is here is talking about Assyria, talking about uh, Nineveh and the isolation you can have the verses read it for yourself but if you like the 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 to understand this is Mesoto Mesopotamia the between the two uh, uh, Tigris and Euphrates this is Iraqi things where Uruk uh, Danin here is Nineveh this is Assyria Armenia on the top here is where um, um, Abraham left and then he went into the Canaan, all these parts, which is Syria and uh, Lebanon and Syria, Egypt is in here. So they left that part and they went here. Uh, so this is a promised land because people occupying this land was very, very wicked in what they're doing. And God decided to, so this is another picture of Nineveh. And uh, with this, I'm gonna stop because you guys look uh, tired. So Father, I just pray that people will be taking the warning as serious. And it was done by you once and twice and right. There is no one who's teaching us that what you did in the past will come to happen. And when we will be united in that evil, uh, things worshiping other gods and going to, to all these witchcraft and things of the demons, that hurt you more than any other thing. So Father, I pray that you protect us and let us be aware of this sin which broke your heart. And Father, I pray that um, everyone will listen. It's not gonna be um, taking it lightly or whatever, but take every word was said into this as uh, serious. I pray that in the name of Jesus. So you lead them into repentance, Father that they take the life that they have and we are on the verge of things to change around the world. So Father, let everyone hear my message today. We'll take it serious. I pray that in the name of Jesus. Amen.